I know what you're thinking. Cigarettes and lung cancer and all that. You don't think Dad? <laughs> Is there no hope? There's always hope. I only wish I could give you more. The sad truth is, if you had cancer then, it wasn't looking too good. But in the decades since that film was made, there have been huge advances in cancer research. Today, there's plenty of hope. Having cancer now is not necessarily a death sentence. I've had my own experience of this. I know what having cancer in the family is like because my mother died of lung cancer in 1980. But happily, there's never been a more promising time than now for those affected, and here in England, the Institute of Cancer Research is forging ahead in the race to find cures. Our focus is very firmly on using a new understanding of what actually causes cancer in order to try and prevent the disease, to diagnose it much more effectively, and to develop new treatments. Since I was diagnosed with prostate cancer some four years ago, I've been on a program of active surveillance. During that time, there have been many breakthroughs, and I feel that each one of these has increased my chances and improved my choices. The recent decoding of the human genome has rapidly accelerated the process of cancer research, and here at the Institute, the close daily contacts between the scientists and the hospital clinicians means that scientific discoveries can be rapidly translated into patient treatments. In the last decade, the Institute has taken an incredible 10 anti-cancer drugs into clinical trials. Now that's an achievement unmatched anywhere in the world. Well, there are two reasons really to be very optimistic about drug development going forward. One is the success that we've had already. We've really shown that the drugs we can develop can have good effects in cancer patients and they're very well tolerated and much better than the drugs that we've used in the past. And the second is that we continue to find new genes from the Genome Project and we can go through this process again and the end result will be to tailor make drugs for individual patients that will take us into a new era of cancer treatment. Today, 99% of people with testicular cancer, if caught early enough, survive. I was given life-saving drugs, given the all clear, and now I'm able to live my life to the fullest. The Institute of Cancer Research has always been in the forefront of its field. In the 1960s, it made one of the most fundamental discoveries, the dramatic link between genetic damage and cancer. It was also the first to identify the suspected connection between smoking and lung cancer. In fact, it's isolated more cancer genes than any other organisation in the world. Scientists at the Institute identified a gene involved in breast cancer known as BRCA2. This has been an incredibly important finding that has been applicable across the world. It's allowed us to find women who are at increased risk of breast cancer and it's also given us insights into how breast cancer occurs in the first place. my breast cancer treatment six years ago, the new generation of drugs have given me peace of mind, independence and a real quality of life. As a non-commercial body, the Institute is able to focus on a, a wide variety of cancers, from the more common ones to the ones that are much rarer. This speeds up the discovery process because it means that the findings from one area can immediately be applied to another. Among the rarer types, very much helped by this are those that affect children. Thanks to the breakthroughs in children's cancer research, my baby son was first on a clinical trial and now is a healthy, happy five-year-old. The Institute of Cancer Research is very close to a number of significant breakthroughs. The only thing holding it back is lack of funding, not brain power. Put quite simply, the more money the Institute has, the more lives it can save.
There are three very good reasons for funding the Institute of Cancer Research. The first is that we're extremely efficient. 92p of every pound we get goes directly into doing research. The second is the extraordinary breadth of skills that we bring to the problem. The fact that we can go all the way from the most basic laboratory work to the clinic. And the third is our track record. We have in the past uh, done a lot of work that's made a real difference to the quality of life of cancer patients and we mean to continue to do it. I'm a businessman. And thanks to the Institute's pioneering research into prostate cancer, I was able to carry on working throughout my treatment. And that was five years ago, and I've been fine ever since. Young or old, rich or poor, cancer is our common enemy, but it's a war that can be won. And it would be so wonderful if you could help win it by investing in a cancer-free future. After all, the next life saved just belong to someone you love.